situation we've had to be in. I think there have been a number of incidents, um, but I think the one that absolutely I felt we, we had gone too far was when we were filming in the Ivory Coast and we were following the story of uh, a group of young men who had been trafficked from one part of Africa to the Ivory Coast and they'd worked as slaves on a cocoa farm for about five years. We arrived to film a sto the story about slaves involved in the cocoa production and in other words in the production of chocolate, you know, a luxury for us. And these people's lives are lost into the slave route producing this cocoa for us to go into our chocolate. And by an extraordinary sequence of events, um, we came across an NGO, a non-government organisation, who were working to help the slaves, who had just received 17 slaves, who had all escaped from a cocoa farm. And they were covered in whelks, where they'd been beaten, you know, properly beaten whelks, right around their body, you know, like that. And they were thin and they were petrified, but somehow, on that day, they, between them, had got the courage together and found a way of getting off the farm, their plantations, they call them farms, in the Ivory Coast and got to this NGO that they, one of them had heard about. And we were there, we were there. And so um, we decided we would, at that moment in time, go to the slave master. We were told exactly where the farm was. And their master and owner was still there. We thought we've got to get there before the press get the story because then he'll flee. So without taking any of our normal precautions, we completely did everything unprofessional. We got straight into the Jeep and we set off. We didn't phone anyone, we didn't we didn't check our sat now phone, sat now, sat satellite phone. You said sat now in my car. Yeah. <laughs> the sat phone was working, which it wasn't. We didn't have a second vehicle to back us up because if you're, you know, hijacked or you know somebody jumps on the car to to steal from you, if you haven't got a backup, then you're on your own. You know, it's just not intelligent to do that in the Ivory Coast, and that's what we did. We just drove off and we sort of had a few directions and we sat off and it was towards the end of the day, so the light was going. Nobody knew where we were. You know, by the time we didn't even know how long it would take us to get there. And we were travelling up this road, up to the top of um, a mountain, and our translator in the back said, uh, um, we must keep the doors locked. And I said, yeah, absolutely. I said, uh, is it a particularly bad road, this, or what? And he goes, yeah, last week seven people were killed along here in a jeep not dissimilar to ours. And I felt this complete panic in me. And I realised that all the years I've been making films and all the lessons I've learned and all the preachings I've given about security and safety and what to do, I had done none of them. I was totally unprofessional, as was Brian and the cameraman Jeremy, and we were heading up this drive, this road, and there were bandits, we were losing light, and we hadn't even got to do the interview. We were only on the way up and the light was going. And I had a complete sense of humour failure, and I said, stop, 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 we can't go any further. You know, we're three hours off-road, so we're up this beaten old track, three hours. No one knows where we are, the light's going. I said, this is madness, madness. I said, how can we be doing this? What are we thinking? What is this worth? What is this interview worth? I said, I've got children at home. What am I thinking to go up and get an interview at the top of a hill with somebody who we know is going to be armed and doesn't want us there? and nobody in the world knows where we are. If we die tonight, everyone, including our family, will say, what were they thinking? They won't say, this is a tragedy and they did good work. It'd be, what were they thinking? You know, it, it a absolutely took away anything we might have achieved because we were doing something so very foolish. And Brian, um, who was uh, co-producing and directing with me, said, you know, he recognised that this was a Kate alert, 
and that I wasn't going to be calmed down very easily and she sort of had to play me quite carefully to, <laughs> to work this one out and eventually um, he said well you know we're over halfway there you know we're nearly there if we get there and we feel we're in any danger we will turn around and come straight back and I just had to go with it and I did, and we did get to the top, and we did the most spectacular interview with this horrific man who was armed and who had beaten these lads for years and starved them and buried some as well. He killed some with his mistreatment. And, and that interview was a very core part of the film. And it was only when I got back to my hotel room that night and I just burst into floods of tears and it was relief it was panic that I'd been so stupid. After all these years of doing this, I was so stupid, and so was Brian, and so was Jeremy, what were you thinking? And when the film went out, and this interview was in it, the power of the story was so enormous. We were called to Washington and interviewed by two men sent from the White House, and they met us in a hotel lobby, and they said, we've got three questions. And we didn't, you know, we didn't, go and have a coffee or anything, we just sat in the hotel lobby and they phoned us all the way there to answer these three questions and they said, do you have more footage of, of this incident in the Ivory Coast? Yes. Do you have more evidence of people on the ground who can back up your facts? Yes. Do you have further statistics from people on the ground that say that there are X number of slaves in Cocoa? Yes. They said, thank you very much. Uh, we, will, we would like to take possession of all your footage a copy of all your footage. And from tomorrow, the United States of America will stop trading with the Ivory Coast in the cocoa beans. And that is exactly what happened. And that was monumental. That was, you know, again, it's the power of television. You know, from the White House, they stopped trading with the Ivory Coast for a certain period of time whilst there were talks and people tried to get to the bottom of why the, 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 the lads on the farms were not being paid, you know, at what point who was taking the money and who knew about slavery, it's complicated but it made it worthwhile but the flip side of that is we might never have come back and we might never have got that interview and it just would have been nothing so that was a time that I regretted at the time I'm Erin Wilkinson and today I spoke to Kate Blewett